So now that I've shown you how to skin and gut a rabbit and prepare it for consumption, I want to uh, just show you um, how to utilize the fur and to to turn, yeah, so that it can be used as a, a textile. Um, the first thing I did was just uh, wash down the outdoor kitchen. Now I'm just going to put a bit of salt on it. Um, salt is a great antimicrobial. So I'm going to rub a bit of that in. I'm not going to worry too much about the fur getting wet because it, we're going to set it up uh, to be dry. To dry, actually. I'm going to basically just salt it. A goodly amount of salt. Rub the salt in. I mean, it is better to do this when it's dry, but salt will stay. <clears throat> and then <coughs> I've made a little frame. So I'm hoping this will be long enough to stretch across there. And I've got some nails here which we've uh, salvaged from the local tip. So hopefully there's a lot of little brads or something I can use. They're probably at the bottom. So the salt comes from the Pink Lake and we usually, friends that have gone over to that part of Victoria have um, sometimes brought back a, a bucket for us and um, we've, we've paid them in other forms, either knowledge sharing or some sort of food. Or So what I'm doing is stretching the rabbit, much like a painting stretcher. Um, use the finer nails as you can, otherwise the, the pine split. And then bring that one over there. So this is very easy to do a rabbit um, because of the scale, it's small, it doesn't take very long. Rabbits are just an incredible food. If we could just stop poisoning them in Australia and actually eat them, they get their own food. They don't re require industrial feedlots and a whole industry of transportation. Um, it's good to eat them uh, um, because, uh, as we know, they breed up very uh, um, radically and <laughs> we can have, at times, rabbit plagues um, but yeah just for governments to continue to send out various viruses um, as biological controls rather than us being biological controls is really a bit of what I was talking about in the previous film about systemic man-made mass death rather than one-on-one -on -one predation and the difference in violence between violence that can be seen and sensed and owned up to and violence where others do our killing for us and that when you, we can't see our food whether we're vegan vegetarian or omnivores you have to accept that they come with a lot of violence and a lot of a lot of blood on them um, but I also said that Tyson Yanka Porter in his book Sand Talk has a really great chapter on um, direct violence and that direct everyday small amounts of violence doesn't lead to um, a global economic system that is killing the world very quickly. Okay, so now that's ready pretty much to um, uh, to dry. 
and I'll just clean up some of the edges. And have I left anything out, Meg? Uh, I'd like to see the other side of it. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. I'll just get a, another nail or two in here. Okay, so there's the other side. Mm, beautiful. So salting and drying a skin is the first stage and then the next stage is softening which is a very easy technique um, just quite time consuming particularly with a large hide um, but with a small rabbit fur um, these are really handy for handles um, I've got a, a lovely rabbit fur uh, on my um, it's just behind you there. slingshot oh, yeah. and um, it just it just um, not only is it comfortable in the hand but it, it also reminds us of just the animal and plant interrelationship and of course fungi as well there you go oh I'm being predated again <laughs> okay so there it is um, pretty simple to do especially a small rabbit skin um, very handy uh, to have such textiles around for various things. This could make a pouch, um, a, f a, a pouch for stones, um, for a slingshot. It could make a, a nice wallet. It could uh, make a handle for something. Um, it's really great to, yeah, just to honour the whole the animal's life by using all the parts. Meg is going to show us next um, how to turn rabbit liver into rabbit liver pate.